Let's say you mark these scriptures up in your Bible and such, and, and, and you know that the messages are free online or free there by CD in the bookstore there. They're available to you. Much of these things that are going forth, it's good revelation. It's good. I, I, I'm excited for myself because some of the things that I've seen in the last little while, some of them are things that I've endeavored to rightly divide with the Word for years. So I'm gracious and grateful to God by the Spirit of God that we have the revelation that we need to overcome and succeed in our walk with Him. Amen? Do you know that you have a way already prepared for you to overcome everything that you have faced or you will face in this life? Jesus has already walked the path. He's already paved the way. Now by faith in Jesus' name, we simply have to walk the path that He's prepared. We follow in His steps. He is our example. Amen? Many, if not all of you, were here on Sunday. Uh, minister, we got off of the gift of righteousness. We'll be back, I believe, on Sunday. And it's going to be very good. Family and Friends Day this coming Sunday is going to be a message that's encouraging, but more importantly, life-changing that people will receive. And you guys be in prayer with us that the Word will have free course. The Holy Spirit's going to move and lives are going to be changed, right? Yes. We're glad we're eating and all that good stuff and having good fellowship. But the greatest thing is that God's will comes to pass in our midst, right? But on this past Sunday, I ministered a message at the instruction of the Lord titled, uh, Flee Fornication, right? It was a, a, a good humdinger, dance and shout, <laughs> and all such things, and, and, and all of that good stuff. But it was just at the instruction of the Lord, all jokes aside, we want to be willing and obedient, so we need to the good of the land. And everything God does is for a purpose and is to help us, right? Yeah. So that, that's not what I'm talking about tonight, so y'all don't get concerned. But I do want to teach you tonight and begin to talk to you tonight about something that is important to me, to God, and, and to each and every one of you. But on Monday, after I ministered this, this I got the title, I got the message this morning. But the Holy Spirit said, many in your midst are dealing with many things, vices, uh, strongholds, uh, what many call addictions. I don't use that word freely. I don't like it because we've been set free. We'll get revelations from the Word to, to show you that. And, and some have been bound by these things for years. He told me Monday morning, I want to teach them. I want you to teach them how to get free and stay free through their application of my word. And I told you, John, we'll go to Luke 4 to begin with, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We see the purpose. The Lord Jesus Christ came. We see what he was commissioned to do. Luke 4, verse 18. Are y'all there? Yes. Yes. He's already closed. By the Spirit of the Lord Jesus said is upon me. He hath anointed me. He has equipped me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Does He want you brokenhearted? No. To preach deliverance to the captives. Does He want you bound? No, no He wants you delivered. He wants you set free. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Put up the Amplified. Version of verse 18, Luke chapter 4. Amplified says this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. The anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news. The gospel to the poor. You know who the poor is, right? The poor is everybody that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Is Lord and Savior of their life. He has sent me to announce relief to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed. Does he want us oppressed? No. Those who are downtrodden. Does he want us downtrodden? No. no. Those who are bruised. Does he want us bruised? No. Crushed and broken down by calamity. That is the purpose that Jesus came. Is what he was anointed for. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, right? We've been given the Word. We've been given the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been given the Holy Ghost. And we have all the help. That we need, and now we need to learn how to apply these things and overcome everything that He has in store for us that, that we face in this life. John 8 31 says this. We'll go back to where we just came from. You're not going to read all of this. <coughs> but I already determined in my office as far as what I have prepared, I'm not going to finish anyway, so we're just going to take our time and get into the words that are with you. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. 32 says, And you shall know the truth. 
You shall know the truth. Understand, perceive, get acquainted with is what that means to know. You shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Shall make you free. Shall liberate you. Bring you to liberty. Liberty shall deliver you. And then if you go down to verse 36, Jesus said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Did you know it's a biblical truth for us to stand here tonight and say, Jesus has set us and made us free. Amen. It's biblically true and correct. And you say, well, I have areas in my life that are not sanctified, that are not holy, that have not been given to God, that has bound me. Well, that's why you're here in this church under this teaching, because you need to know what the Word of God says, because we want to walk in the fullness of all that God has done for us in Jesus. And part of it is that we have been, free. we say in line with the Word, I believe over in Romans chapter 6, I know in Romans chapter 6, we are to let sin have no dominion over us. We have dominion over over sin, right? We have been made in Christ Jesus by God out of His love. We are new creatures with a new nature. The nature of God. Amen? Yes. He has set us free. We come to this realization and knowledge through the entrance and the application of God's Word. Psalms 119 verse 130. You can just write it down. Psalms 119 verse 130. If there is darkness in our lives, there's only one way to cure it. The entrance, the Bible says, Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of thy words does what? Giveth light. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. I, I can't, I'm not going to say I can't, the Holy Spirit will help me, but I had wrote on my board in my office at the other church there, TAP and Bono, I had it wrote up on the top right hand side, about sin and any weakness in the believer's life was the result of one of two things. It was either lack of understanding and knowledge of God's Word or lack of application of that understanding and knowledge. It's the only reason that we have and keep weaknesses and sins in our lives. Amen? Amen. It's one of two things. So where did you get that from? It's in line with the Word, but the Holy Ghost gave it to you. It is either lack of knowledge and understanding. If you don't know you're free, you're never going to be free. Amen? And many say, well, I have this weakness. I have this vice. I have this addiction. I have this problem. And I have that problem. And I was this way. And my granddaddy was this way. And my great-granddaddy was this way. And my grandma was this way. And all the women in my family was this way. And all the men in my family was this way. But you got saved. You got born again. You made Jesus Christ at some point, if you're a Christian, Lord and Savior in your life. Don't talk about those things anymore. Love the people in your family, but don't build the strongholds up that's run down through your family by talking about how bad things are. You don't identify with those things. You identify with the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for you. I'm not in who anybody says I am. I'm not who I used to be. Amen? I'm not what everybody says I'm supposed to be by popular opinion. I am who the Bible says I am. My identity is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Everything He did, He did not do it for Himself. It was not necessary. He did it for us. For God so loved the world. Amen? It was the world that was condemned. It was the world that was lost. It was the world that was separated from God on the way to hell. It wasn't Jesus. Amen? Amen? For God so loved the world that He gave who? His only begotten Son that whoever believed in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Very often we think if I could just get straightened out, I could be the Christian God's called me to be. That's the message we're going to get into. we got it backwards. You need to understand who God is, who the Lord Jesus Christ is, the help that's available to you, and the fact that you've already been set free. You really need to hear the announcement that comes through the Word of God about who you are. Right? Because the more you talk about who you're not, the more you're not who you're supposed to be. We need to speak God's word. What does Centurion say in, in Matthew chapter 18? I'm going to go there. But he said, speak the word only. Right? So what am I going to say? Say what God says. He would say, I don't know about all that confession business. Jesus did. Confess what God said over your life, over your children, over your finances, over your life, over every area. Right? It doesn't matter how I feel tonight. I have the wisdom of God. I have the anointing of God. I have the grace of God that's sufficient for me. I have the favor of God. Amen? I'm blessed and highly favored is not a cute saying. 
I am those things presently in Christ Jesus. You'll never, when you get what we've been talking about these last few weeks or couple months, you will never deal with insecurity again. Never. You'll never, ever, ever do anything, take any action to try to fit in. Because if you go to Ephesians chapter 1, you will see that God in Christ Jesus has already accepted you in the Beloved. He didn't do that because of who you are. He did it because of who He is. Everything He did, He did because God is a God of love. Amen? You say, well, there's a practical application side. Yes. If you're going to walk in God's best, you're going to have to pass the test. But the reality is we've been failing the test because we've been trying to overcome things in our life and pass the test in our own strength, will, ability, and knowledge. And it's why we continue to fail. We need to take advantage of the support system that we have and everything God has provided for us already. If you are a Christian, no matter what you have, where you come from, and this is not just about finances and money. I'm talking about every area. What you have, where you come from, what it looks like right now, good, bad, or ugly, it is a biblical fact to say in Christ Jesus, I am blessed. Amen. Now. Amen. It's true. Right? You say, oh, you just, you just don't know, Pastor Jesse. You don't know. You haven't seen my checkbook. You haven't seen my family. You haven't seen how I acted when I left the house tonight. Well, I'm not going to say that God condones sin, but the reason you keep doing those things is because of what you're looking at. That's what you see. If you will see yourself in Christ Jesus, you can rise above those things and be somebody that you've never been before. Right? So who the Son has set free is free indeed. We already read that in Psalms 119. Light dispels darkness. If we have darkness in our lives, it is time to introduce the light. The title of this message is this. We talk about faith for healing, and we should. We talk about faith for finances, and we should. We talk about faith for all kinds of things, and we should. But the title is this. Faith for victory over sin. Faith for victory over sin. I've watched things for years. I, I don't want to say I have a message uh, uh, entitled this because it wouldn't be true. I've never preached it. But I got a title in my spirit a long time ago, whether it be a message or something later down the road, I don't know. <coughs> but the title was The Sin Problem. And, and, and behind it, though, is what was important. It's the sin problem with an exclamation point and then a question mark behind it. Because we would look at the church through our natural eyes, many Christians and maybe even ourselves, and we'll say, My God, have mercy. Look at all the sin in the church. Right? Look at all the sin in people's lives. Look at the way people are living this day and time. But my question is, is the why of it? Because when you get into the Word of God, we would say there's a sin problem with an exclamation point. But when you get into the Word of God, you find the reality is, is that the question mark would be, is the sin problem, comma, really? Because in Christ Jesus, there's, there's not a sin problem. There's not a bondage problem. There's not an addiction problem. Amen. We have been delivered already Amen. out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into this new marvelous kingdom Amen. of light in Christ Jesus and the Lord. Amen? And we can look at some of those things. Like I said, I'm in no hurry because I did not know that I had as many notes that I did until I got to my office. But it's all good, and we're going to talk about what God tells us to, and you're going to get what you need. Amen? Because I, I put this in my notes this morning. This is how this message came about. I thought it would just be tonight. But, but I put in here, before we go any further, well, I took off there and never came back. So we just go the way God tells us to. It's funny sometimes the way the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. You don't always know where you're going, but if you follow Him, He does, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll end up where you're supposed to be. We trust in Him with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, right? We need to stop, listen, and some of these things you're going to have to receive in balance. Because you're not understanding. I'm, I'm a person that questions things. And I don't know if you are. I'm not talking about questioning God. I don't believe in questioning God. I don't believe in blaming God. I believe there's issues in my life that's my fault. Amen. I don't believe it's God's. I don't believe there's no problems with God. I'm not confused about God. I'm not upset with God. I'm not discouraged with God. Amen. But, but if you look at the church as a whole, and I've looked at these things for years, a reality is, is, is by people's standards, the majority of the belief systems in the church are split up in two different ways. Just say one side, the other side. 
One side focuses on blessing, gift of righteousness, all the things that we need to understand. One side believes that everything is okay, everybody's saved, and everybody's going to heaven. Nothing matters what you do. That's one side. The other side believes if you sneeze wrong, look across the road wrong, you're going straight to hell if you die at that moment. And somebody has got to be wrong. Because that is, a matter of fact, I'm just a person that likes to rightly divide everything needs to run through the filter of God's Word. By the standards of most people, especially religious people, I will make an announcement that is not very popular. Everybody you know, including you, is going to hell. I'm just going to be straight with you. Everybody you know, including you, is going to hell. You say, well, if I'm not doing this, that, or the other, I'm not on the way to heaven. I, I must not be a Christian. They're not a Christian because they did this, that, or the other. God doesn't condone a sin. We're never going to preach you any of those things. The balance of it is this. None of us have arrived. We are to always be striving for perfection. We're just going to get off. I don't want to, but we are. He wants us, 1 Thessalonians, go there. This is going to have to be talked to you in balance because I know myself. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 23. I know myself, I've heard things so imbalanced for years, there's been truths in God's Word I've not been able to grasp. Because there's certain messages and topics that I've basically stayed away from until God led me back to them because of false doctrine and heresy and all kind of things that you see today. But I want to know what God says. Amen? He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter, you know, I said 4, it's 5. First, you'll not find 1 Thessalonians 4, 23. 1 Thessalonians 5. Grayson didn't find 1 Thessalonians 4, 23. <laughs> Grayson, come on now. I thought you had it. 5, 23. I'm sorry. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. What does that mean? You want a good study note and message when you get home, study that word. They sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. See, there's some things that has been done for us already. And there's some things we need to be doing. i got another message I've been studying on this also along these lines. And, and if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Well, the reality of it is, is that scripture is true and right. But if you take it in and of, your, in and of itself, and you say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, uh, old, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then you look in the mirror and look at your life. You, after you get saved, you realize everything's not new. Quickly. You realize you still got some things to work on. Right? So that scripture in and of itself, of course, is the Bible. So it's true. We understand that. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Well, that's speaking of your condition. Excuse me, your position. That's speaking of the gift of righteousness we've been talking about. That is speaking of who you are in Christ Jesus. And that is, there's three different, I don't want to say levels, that's incorrect. But in speaking of sanctification. See, Jesus said, God said, be ye holy as I am holy. Right? But the fact is, we were made holy instantaneously in spirit. So we became holy, but daily we are still having to become holy. Right? We were sanctified and set apart in Christ Jesus before you was ever born. And you were made and put in that right position the moment you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You were sanctified and now you're still being sanctified. You were set apart, but you're still being set apart. Because the reality of the truth of the gospel is this. There's three different groups, you could say, of sanctification. He said in 523 of 1 Thessalonians, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. This is where people get mixed up, and I guess this is why I'm getting off on this now. Because people say, if you was a Christian, or they was really a Christian, they wouldn't act this way, that way, or the other way, so they must not be a Christian. And by that standard, everybody you know is going to hell. Because there's really two different groups or types of sins. There are sins of commission. There are things that you do, that you see and know, God sees and knows, and that everybody else sees and knows. And that's the ones they talk about. There's other sins called sins of omission. See, a sin of commission is committing something or doing something that you should not do. Right? But the Bible also says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is a sin. So you may not know nothing, but I may be going through food line and the Lord witness to my spirit and say you need to minister or say something with words of encouragement to so-and-so. 
and out of shyness or whatever, I don't say anything and I keep on walking. Well, nobody knows that but me, but I disobey God. That is just as much a sin as if I said something wrong to somebody. Amen. That I didn't say what I should have said when I should have said it at the instruction of the Lord. So by our standards, the reality is, although we are perfect in Christ, we are still being perfected. Talking about sanctification, us becoming holy, there is, number one, there is total, excuse me, no, not total, there is positional sanctification. That would be what? That's the gift of righteousness we've been talking about. That is a gift. That is what you God has done in Christ Jesus and you received at the, at the altar or wherever it was when you got saved. Just like that, your spirit man was made brand new. But if everything was right and perfect at that moment, then what in the world are you going to talk about? If you're, going to, if you're going to be who God's called you to be, if you're going to be transformed, you've got to renew your mind with the Word of God. You've got, to, you've got to deny this flesh. You've got to crucify, mortify, put to death the deeds of the flesh. Why would he say all those things if we already had and already everything was done the moment we got saved? <coughs> That's where people get mixed up because there is a positional sanctification to begin with. That's who we are in Christ Jesus at the moment. That's if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That takes place immediately in your heart when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And that one is done and complete, sanctified, set apart, made holy in Christ Jesus. And many say, well, he's only coming back for a church that is holy and spotless and blameless and without blemish. Well, by the standards of most people, Jesus is never coming back. Because we're always receiving new people into the body. So they're definitely not fully sanctified. But positionally speaking, our identification and who we are in Christ, we've been talking about our righteousness. I am no more or less sanctified than the person that just got saved. In Christ Jesus. That is my identity, and it's your identity, right? So that is done immediately. Now there's another one in the middle that I'm about to talk about, but then there's another one that's the third one. We got positional sanctification. We got, at the end, we got total or complete sanctification. We went from one to three. Total or com complete sanctification. How this one's going to happen? Is either the, the Lord's going to come, you're going to be raptured out of here, or either we're going to have your funeral. Amen. Right? And you being a believer... The mortality puts on immortality. You're transformed and you're changed and you'll be changed just like that. But see where we get mixed up is, and this is what we're focusing on, is so important even in understanding for us to have faith to overcome sin. And, and the reason for this is, God, there's so much inside. It's going to come out in balance so you understand it. We've been running from God because we have things in our lives that are not of God, but we need to understand the only way we can get help and overcome is to run to Him. And we can run to Him because of what He's already done in Christ Jesus. The middle one that we have to focus on, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, how much does God want of you? All of you, right? When I receive Jesus into my heart and life, my spirit, man, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. That is speaking of position. But my condition will not be at my position immediately. I've still got to deal with this flesh. I've got to renew my mind every day. There's positional sanctification, which I thank God for. But the second one is what we focus on daily. It's progressive sanctification. We are becoming more holy daily. We are becoming more worthy, walking worthy. This is our walk. Walking worthy. Matter of fact, this is where you get messed up on all your social media, on all the people that you listen to. Most people are not teaching these things. They're teaching one side or the other. Most of what you hear, I call it positive Christianity, and there's a balance in it. But if, if you choose and pick everything you want, the only thing you will look at is the gift of righteousness. The only thing you will look at is who you are in Christ Jesus, which is extremely important and necessary, but understand. We thank God for the gift of righteousness, what He has done, but because of what He's done, and me taking full availability, excuse me, full opportunity, however you would say it, full benefit and advantage of all that He's done already in Christ Jesus, uh, the gift of righteousness properly used will cause me to have fruits of righteousness. <laughs> Because He's made me holy, I can become more holy every day. Because I'm sanctified, set apart, and in Christ Jesus, this is my identity as I'm putting on the Word of God. As I'm renewing my mind every day, what happens is, is I'm, this is the standard. And I'm coming up daily to the standard of God's Word. You'll be more holy in, in some senses. 
In our position, you'll never be more holier than you are right now. But in reality, in your life, your condition, we're to be becoming more like Jesus every single day. That is our responsibility as we renew our mind with the Word of God. As we're daily submitting our lives to Him. Amen? Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Where we get mixed up and you get people, you know, I don't like to tackle these things. And I don't have time to discuss it. But people say, well, you know, I don't, what, what you take on the once saved, always saved? It's always kind of frustrated me, to be honest with you, because I don't think that way. Right. I don't understand the question, I guess you would say. I don't know what that means. I don't understand because the reality is, is, is you're not saved today and then you're not tomorrow and you are Friday and you're not Sunday. That's dumb. That's, that, that doesn't line up with the Word of God. And if that is your philosophy, you do not have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ anyways. Because see, the Lord God is faithful when we are faithless. He never changes. The covenant is not based upon you and me. It's based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we get it, the problem with people that think that way, my personal opinion, and what I believe in line with the Word of God, is the truth of the matter is, you are either saved or you're not. That's a reality. But now you're not, it's not every other day on your calendar proclamation. It does not operate that way. You had a bad day yesterday, and it, it does offend me. Not, not towards me, but, but towards God. Because just say you've got a child, you know, or children, and they're your children. And sometimes they'll do ignorant stuff, and sometimes they have runs one, one, this one run off, that one run off, and you got a wayward child here, and you got a wayward child there, and they're doing all these things, and maybe doing things you haven't told them to do. Well, you might want to choke them. And you very well may correct them, and you should. You speak the truth in love. We're going to get to some of these things later in more detail. But the reality is, you as an earthly parent, no matter how bad you want to choke them, you still love them. Especially if you're a Christian. You still love them no matter what. I've had some of you tell me, I understand, don't understand the Bible. There's been in some of these situations, and you've made the statement, you don't understand, you'll not know unless it's yours. And, and that part may be true, but I understand because the love never changes. Your love for your child is not based on whether they had a good day or a bad day. If they do good today, yeah, you tell them I'm proud of you and I love you, that's good. You keep going that way, it's going to benefit and bless, you, bless your life. You be to walk in the blessings of God and people see Jesus in your life. That's what you will and want. But the day that they don't do like they're supposed to, dude, when they come in, you say, I don't love you no more. You're not my child today. You was yesterday. They're your child because they're your child. You're a child of God because you're a child of God. You're righteous not because of yourself. There was nothing that you or I or all of any of mankind, it don't matter how good you are. Good men don't go to heaven. Good women don't go to heaven. Not on that basis. You can't do anything good enough to get to heaven. Amen. You have to first off realize that you ain't good enough. Amen. Before you're ever going to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior life, that's why the rich man, that's why the great man in the world or woman with all the worldly wisdom, the Bible says it's hard for them to come into the kingdom of God because they got other things to depend on. Right? Us going over or under, going to heaven or hell, has got everything to do not with us, but what we do with Jesus. Amen. And it's a good question, a good message. What are we doing with Jesus? Amen. Amen. All the problems we have in our life, no matter who you are or what you're dealing with, we've got our eyes off of Jesus and we've got our eyes on us. What I am doing, what I'm not doing, what I have done, what I haven't done. Amen. Amen. Many would confuse this, and I thank God it can never happen if you stay and listen. People say, are you saying sin's okay? Sin nailed your Savior to the cross. The wages of sin is death. The law of sin and death states that sin produces death every time. We are not making light of sin. But our focus is not sin. Our focus is Jesus. Our focus is that He has dealt with the sin problem, the sickness problem, the disease problem. The bondage problem. He has dealt with these things. And our focus has got to be on Him. Religion will put your focus on everything but Him. It brings into the church all kind of stuff. This is stupidity. And He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a man and a Jesus Christ, God the Father, is my sufficiency. He makes us able ministers of the New Testament. He is my sufficiency. He is my ability. He is enough. He's more than enough. Amen. 
But we somehow, not intentionally, sometimes we decide that we need other things. We need a revelation that Jesus is enough. That Jesus is more than enough. Never think as I get into this that I'm saying sin's okay. It'll always take you further than you want to go, keep you there longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. But listen, listen to this. We have many in the church today, and that's why I don't say very much. Many Christians like it, so they all pile together. A Christian that is in sin does not need anybody to stand up and honor them about how wrong they are. For an hour and a half every time they come to church. A Christian that is in sin already knows it. Because they're living with it every day. Amen. They're in prison when they should be free. Amen. So what our goal is, is not to tell you sin's okay, but to tell you how to get out in Jesus' name. Right. That's what we're here for. We're here to help God help people. Amen. We're to be the vessels that God's called us to be, right? Of His mercy, His grace, yes. Grace, yes is truth, yes. The love of God never compromises the truth of God's Word. Never. We are going to stop running away from God because you have sin in your life. You say, God will not accept me. He will accept your sin, but He never accepted you anyways because of how good or bad you were. And yes, if we're in sin, we need to repent. Yes, sin hinders fellowship. But God has accepted you and will accept you the same way He always has. He accepts us on the way, the truth, and the life. The basis for our acceptance is Jesus, not you. Yeah. You not live up to the standards. See, you're being perfected daily. But in of yourself, you will not be completely sanctified and perfect totally until you leave here. Amen. Now, in spirit, I understand the balance. In Christ Jesus, our spirits are not failures. We are new creatures with a new nature. We are no longer children of the enemy, Satan. We are children of the Most High God. Right? The problem is, is there's more layers to this thing that's been taught. So we have to be careful. We want to rightly divide the word of truth. Right? There's my part and there's God's part. But I truly cannot walk out my part without understanding God's part and what He's done for me. Because He is my ability. He is how Jesus is how I overcome. Right? Does that make any sense to y'all? Stop running away from God if you have sin in our life. This is the, that is the best way to stay bound your entire life. I cannot count the times that I did this because of my ignorance of God's Word. God has made a way for us to get back to Him if we've got a way and get all the help that we need. We must take full advantage. Go to John 3.16. Some of these passages that we know. The Lord spoke this to me this morning as I was praying. He said, you know, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but God, He knows what He's doing. John 3, 16. He said, you know, and I'm just speaking naturally. I know Christ is our healer. We're talking about naturally. He said, if my people are sick, they'll go to the doctor. He said, if they want to make more money, they go to work. Right? If they want to learn more and grow more, they go to school, go to college, whatever. They go to get education. If they want groceries, they go to the grocery store. He said they get sin in their life and get the devil in their life and they run from me, run from the pastor and quit the church. He said my people cannot get straightened out by themselves. He said how is it that they know that they have a need for these other things and they go to where the need can be met? But they have things in their lives that are binding them that have bound them for years and for years in their strongholds and instead of running to me, they run away from me. That's the quickest way to stay in bondage till the day you leave this earth. Amen, amen. We need the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is available. Amen? It's available. We've been doing it backwards, many of us, and didn't even realize it. Amen? John 3, 16, it says this, God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son to whoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. <clears throat> For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Why did God not send Jesus to the world to condemn us? We was already condemned. All of us was already condemned. We're all under condemnation outside of Christ. All of us are. We were condemned already. He didn't need to come condemn the world. They were already condemned. How do you know? If we read a little bit further, the Bible tells us so. Amen? 
He did not come to condemn, but to do what? Verse 17, God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Through Him. No other way. Through Him might be saved. Right? He that believeth on Him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Who's condemned? Those that don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? So we got, I'm, just, I'm being honest with you. Your will is important. But the greatest thing you can do with your will is not exercise willpower. It's to surrender your will to God and His will. Amen. Yes. So I'm just not a strong-willed person. Well, your will and your resolve, spiritually speaking, can be strengthened through the Word where you can say no, where it used to always say yes, or you get run over. Right? But we're not exercising on willpower. We're not exercising. We looked at the flip side, you know, condemnation and such, self-condemnation. That maybe you come from bad families and that kind of stuff. But if we got on the flip side of that, the self-righteousness side says, well, I come from a good family with all kinds of money and all these kind of things. So you, and we'll say, well, you know who my family is. Well, Paul talked about Philippians chapter 3. You better count all that stuff as dumb. No matter how rich you've been or how poor you have been, you are nothing going nowhere without Jesus at the head of your life. That's just the fact of the matter. And see, the devil, what he does in the mind of the believer, if you don't renew your word, mind with the word of God, is he, he's got all kinds of add-ons. You know, I, I don't, I got an iPad, and I don't think they get diseases, or not diseases, but viruses and all this kind of stuff. But they got all these, in the old computers, you get viruses and add-ons and all these pop-ups and all this mess, trying to say all the people you got, they already got antivirus software, and then they got 10 more coming up, trying to get you to buy all these things. And then your computer, with all the add-ons, it'll run so slow that you want to do what you already want to do anyways. You want to run over it. If you have any problems with your computer, just come see Miss Frankie. She's our IT lady. Yeah. <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. And if you can't get her to get it straightened out, go buy a small box and Uncle Charles will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He'll take care of it. You got a forklift to run over. It'll be better. Than you. <laughs> but you got all these add-ons, and this thing was created to be like lightning fast to do everything you needed to do. But you got all these things added on, and it's just like you say, "What in the world's going on?" Well, you got things added on there that you don't need. A lot of times in the life of the believer, because our desire as Christians is to do good, we see a lot of things that may be good, but they're not God. Right. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. What's God saying? I do what I do because God's instructed me to do. And where God guides, He provides. There's an anointing on His direction. Yeah. Amen? This is kind of jumping around some, but I pray this is helping you. Amen? Amen. He that believeth not... Excuse me, on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Verse 18, let's read it right, for sure. Very important. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. Who's that light? Jesus, who we believe on, who we believe in, our identity, everything he became, everything he is. When we accept Him into our life, it's so broken and so messed up that the body of Christ, with Jesus being the head, and we're the body, parts of the same body, members of the same body. Does your body and the head go by a different name? No. Different identity? Of course it doesn't. But we say Jesus is great and awesome, which is true, and I'm a miserable failure, going nowhere, never going to be nothing, and we think that's humility. It's false humility. It brings a reproach on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a victor, Amen. an overcomer, more than a conqueror, healed in Jesus' name, blessed beyond measure. People look at me and see that I'm blessed. Because I'm a child of the one true king. Amen. And you say, well, that's all about you. Give me a breath or a chance to talk to them and they will know why I'm blessed. Amen. And they will know who blessed me. Not because I worked harder than everybody else. I'm smarter than everybody else. I got more school than everybody else. And I come from a better family than everybody else. But my Father takes care of me. Yes. Amen. That's why I'm blessed. Amen. That's why I am who I am. My identity is in Him. Yes. And the more of my identity that is in Him, the more I'm going to overcome like Jesus overcame. Yes. Amen. You say, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You've got to be one or the other. You're either a sinner or you're a saint. Yeah. You're not both. No, no, no. You may be a saint, 
that messes up and sins, and you need to repent if you do. But you are not, you've not become a saint because of your own decisions and actions, other than your faith in Jesus. That's how you became a saint. That's how you became set apart, set aside. Matter of fact, that's how you became holy. If you look up the word saint and the word holy, they, but they both mean they're interchangeable. They're the same Greek word. You say, I know I'm a Christian, but I don't know if I can ever be holy. That's redundant. That, that's that's opposite. <coughs> I am holy in Jesus' name, and I'm becoming more holy every day. Amen. 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 All things are possible in him to believe. For everyone that doeth evil, verse 20, John 3, hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21 <coughs> says this, But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are raw in God. I want you to put up the Amplified of verse 21. We're going to have to come to the light if we truly want to walk with God regardless of what has been or is in our lives. Right? Verse, just keep that up there. I don't, you don't have to go back. But verse 17 told us, and I should have said this a while ago, but he said in verse 17, for God sent not his son in the world to condemn. That word the means to decide, to try, to judge, to punish, to damn. He didn't come for that purpose. It's not why Jesus came. But he came to save us, which means to deliver us. What's Psalms 107 20 say? He said his word. And if you go to John 1 1 and then on that, we know that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Yes. We know the word was made flesh and walked this earth. You can't separate, no more than you can separate. You would never say, Jason is a good guy, but his word's no good. You can't separate a man and his word. You can't. Because it's who I am. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You never say, Jason's a good guy, but his word's no good. You can't believe nothing he says. You can't separate God from His Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. So he sent His Word in Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent His Word and He healed us. And He delivered us. And, and I was taught, I'm, I'm not the most highly educated person that you may know, but I got a little bit of education and I was taught that if it had an ED on it, that that was past tense. That, that, that was, he sent His Word. He sent Jesus. He's come. Accomplished the purpose, will, and plan of God, which was redemption for us, mankind. He's died, ascended, rose from the dead, all the good stuff. See the right hand of the Father, right? He sent His Word, and He healed me. And He delivered me. So if my identity is in Christ, and I believe that Jesus is who He says He is, was who He says He was, and will always be who God says He would be and who He says He would be, then I can scripturally and rightfully say that in Christ Jesus, I am healed. That's not a lie. It's the truth. I'm healed. If the doctor gives me a report today, and he says you've got three weeks to live, in line with the Word of God, and I've got to figure out, and I'm not belittling anybody at all that gets in the report, has a hard time focusing, we try to help people, not hurt people. But I've got to keep my eyes on Jesus. And if my identity is in Jesus, He has healed me. I am healed. Unless the Jesus I serve is a failure, I'm healed. And furthermore, not only am I healed, but I am delivered. I've been set free. I do not have to be broken down by calamity. That's, right. That's why I, I love everybody and I'm not against any kind of program and I never would because I believe that people have a good heart and try to help people. But listen, steps in any program will not save you, will not heal you, and will not deliver you. If those steps do not lead you to a person named Jesus Christ, you will be bound when you die. Nobody can save you and heal you and set you free outside and except for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? He sent His Word and He healed me. And He delivered me. That's done. So this word saved, I'm not condemned but saved, or that's the purpose. He sent Jesus, I'm saved, you're saved. We made Jesus Lord of our life. It means to deliver. It means to protect means to heal. It means to preserve. How am I going to make it? How am I going to, Well, I'm going to understand that I'm not strong in myself. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I'm not depending upon how strong that I am. You know, some people may start out young. And me and Lord, talking about it yesterday. I don't know when she said it. We're talking about something I said out of 2 Timothy, I believe, about 
22 or so Sunday morning about fleeing youthful lust. Well, you, a lot of things you don't understand when you're young, but you learn as you get older. And the older you get, it's not wise to put all your faith and dependency in yourself and your natural strength. Because you can leave out of this world definitely healthy. That's fine. That's biblical. That's God's perfect will. But you'll realize that, that physically you might not be as strong at 42 as you was 22. And at 62 as you was 22. You'll realize that th there's certain things that may go this way. But see, God is never changing. His strength, He's my sufficiency, my ability, my everything. He never changes. Amen? That's why the things of this world are temporary. Other things are going this way, that way, the other way, but the inward man can be renewed day by day. I can get there is a certain spirit, and of course it has something to do with my mind, and I have to do something with my mind and my body, but I can get better all the way till I leave here. And I can grow in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> it means to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. Now you've got 21 and amplified of John 3. He who practices truth, who does what is right, comes out into the light. You say, I've got this, that, and the other in my life. If I couldn't get you to get anything else tonight, because Jesus is your high priest. You see, in the old covenant, I'm about to let you go. In the old covenant, the high priest would go in once a, once a year, and, and he would have to go in, and he'd have to take sacrifice, not just for the sins of the people, but for his own sins. Amen. Right? But, but And that was once a year, and that only covered. That's not the same as being washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. But I think you can, this is the last scripture, and we'll never get there tonight. But Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, we got definitions and all kinds of stuff. We thank God God is merciful. We thank God we got a great high priest. See, Jesus did this thing for you and me once and for all. He don't need to come back and pay the price anymore because he offered up his life, his blood, as the perfect payment and sacrifice to set us free. To save us. Saving salvation includes everything. But to save us. To heal us. To deliver us. To set us free. To bless us. Everything was in Him. Put that back up there. Please. <coughs> I'm sorry. No. John 3, 21, Amplified. We're going to go there when we come back. If I get that right now, we're, going to, we're never going to go home right now. John 3, 21, Amplified is where we're at. <coughs> Who practices the truth, does what is right, comes out into the light so that his works may be plainly shown to be what they are. Wrought with God divinely. Go to the next screen. Divinely prompted. Listen, this is the, one of the main points that I've been endeavoring to get to. We're not saying that sin is okay. We're not saying it's okay to do wrong. Wrong will never be right. Right? And right will never be wrong. But we understand, in order to live this life, and accomplish it. God's like, we, we're never going to grow stronger. Our struggles grow stronger, but we're never going to grow stronger if we run away from the light. If we run away from the hell. And the more we look at our weaknesses, our frailties, our insecurities, when you look in the mirror, not just physically, but when you see things in yourself and then have different feelings that you know are not lying in the Word of God, matter of the fact is this is the deal. None of you guys, whether you believe it or not, are fully sanctified yet. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you are being sanctified daily. Amen. Becoming more like Him daily. <laughs> becoming holier daily. Right? That's progressive sanctification. Something we believe tremendously in this church. But to run away from the light is of no help to you or anybody else. Because of Jesus, our high priest, who's gone into heaven before us, who's the way, the truth, and the life, we can boldly, assuredly, and confidently go to the Father today on the basis of the blood that was shed for us, the price that was paid. You can go to the Father because of your faith in Jesus. Amen. Done with God's help in dependence upon Him. You say, I'm bound. We'll come to the place that you realize Trying harder is not going to put you over. <coughs> that is not the goal of the Christian. See, we get out here in the natural world. And we say, well, I'm just going to work harder. I'm just going to try harder. You know, and, and, and I, we've heard these statements all of our lives. And they say, well, what don't kill you make you stronger. Well, I, I, I'm a pastor. And I'll be honest with you, I've known people that isn't true. 
My God, what, what had a hold of them? They got worse every day. They didn't get stronger. They got worse and worse and worse and worse. And the reality of it is, it's horrible, but some of them got worse and worse and worse and worse, and then they finally killed themselves. Committed suicide. This, that's not a truth. What no, what no key to make you stronger. Sometimes a key. Yeah. You've got to come to a realization and a revelation that in and of yourself, and I heard Keith Moore talking one time, and he preaches new creation realities and in him and gift of righteousness and all these things that we're talking about. And he said, you need to know all these new creation realities. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. He said, but never forget, outside of him you have nothing. You go in nowhere, you can do nothing. Amen. He said, never forget that. He said, where's your scripture? You go to John 15. You read down in verses 3 or 4 or so in there. He said, well, you're talking about abiding in the vine. You produce the fruit of the Spirit. If we don't abide in the vine, the vine being the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God, would help and the Holy Spirit will not be fruit producers. Right? right. Stand your feet.